Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. This is Christian Posta from Solo.io. And in this two-part series, we're going to take a look at Istio and a new product at Solo that we launched called the Istio Developer Portal. Now, if you're familiar with Istio, you know that it's a powerful service mesh, which allows you to solve some difficult distributed systems challenges when services try to communicate with, it, with each other. Now, the service mesh solves for things like resilience and security, you know, con connecting two services together, observability and uh, routing, that kind of stuff. But a lot of times when we're deploying these services, we're exposing APIs on them. And we are using multiple APIs and combining them in ways that provide different sort of business value. Now, what we want to do is be able to harness and enable those various different APIs that have been deployed in our microservices architecture in such a way that other people can find them, they can discover them and, and look at their documentation, they can sign up for them self-service without having to um, connect with a centralized team and so forth. And so that's what the Istio developer portal layers on top of something like Istio. And so with Istio Developer Portal, we can create APIs driven by their specs. We can automatically create Istio virtual services and, and, and the routing rules we need to be able to expose them externally. We can curate them in portals to allow folks to come in and, and browse the APIs, try them, and sign up. And we can control all of this with a nice UI as well as uh, alternatively, uh, custom resources in Kubernetes. So we've built the developer portal on, on custom resources that you can use with Cube Apply, just like any other Cube resources. So let's take a look. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create new APIs based on a, a spec document. And in this case, we're going to take a look at open API spec docs. Oops. Nope. We want to look at the API docs. And uh, we could also do this with gRPC schema. So we can treat gRPC APIs uh, very similarly in this developer portal. So we're going, to do, we're going to click on create API doc. We're going to find the, the resources that we want. We'll look at a pet store example. We'll say create API. Pets are classic. Give that a second to come up. We'll up upload a second API. So we have two different APIs that we've defined using the open API spec. Click create that. Things should come alive. There we go. We, now we've got our two pet store example APIs. Now what we want to do is these, these APIs, if we click in them, you can see they expose a few different endpoints. Click on the special one, exposes a lot more endpoints. What we want to do is we want to aggregate these API endpoints or, or, or curate just, just the ones that we want to expose to other parts of the organization or to partners. And to do that, we're going to, we're going to kind of curate these with a, a concept here called an API product. So we're going to build a product that um, allows us to define what an API looks like in terms of these, these API docs that we created. So let's create a new API product. We'll call this pet store. Give it a name, 1.0. Say next. We'll give it a domain name so that we can actually call it. And let's give it a nice image. And lastly, what we're going to do here is we're going to specify which API endpoints we want to expose in this API product. We might not want to expose all of them, like login and logout and so forth, but we might want to search pets and we might want to add new pets, but the other other functionality we might not want to expose. So let's create this API product. 
give that a second to come up. And what we want to do is give it some default routing. So when we start calling these services, let's let's give it some default routing. If you're familiar with um, with Istio, then you'll you'll recognize this in terms of our virtual service, right? So this is the, the fallback default routing. And then for any of the specific um, routes or uh, we, we can specify destinations for those. So we could specify different de destinations here. So that looks good. Let's refresh this. Hopefully everything got saved. Um, that looks good. So if we come back on our API products here, what we can see is we, we created a, a product based on certain API docs specifications that we have. And if we come to the command line, we can see that this automatically created an Istio virtual service for us with, let's take a look at it, with the, uh, the, the different endpoints that we wanted to expose um, coming from those different APIs. If we take a look at the API product, let's, uh, I think it's called pet store. We can see a few different things here. So again, everything in the SEO developer portal is built on CRDs. Um, what we did is we linked to particular API docs or specifications that we had. We slimmed down the number of endpoints that we wanted to expose. We were very explicit about those. Um, and then we got a status. And the status then shows all of the different routes that we can expose on this API, as well as the aggregate schema for these endpoints that we want to expose. So everything in the Istio developer portal, you know, there's a nice UI and get a user experience there, but this also um, ties in with the Kubernetes native way of defining resources in a declarative format. So we've created this, we can see that it automatically created the virtual service. We should be able to call it and we see that the routing took effect and we, and we see a, a proper response here. And what we could do is come back to our product and specify plans and, and usage policies about who's allowed to use it and how frequently. So if we do this as the pet store plan, pet store plan, we'll say five requests per hour. Click that, now we have a new plan. Now, if we try to call this, we should see unauthorized because we don't have an API key to be able to do this. And in the next video, we'll look at taking our new product that we created and the plan that we just created and exposing that in a portal that then users can come, see the portal, sign up for the, the APIs and get access to them. So stay tuned to the next, next video.